Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Uh, welcome to our virtual info night for Great Hearts Texas Open Enrollment. Families throughout the Lone Star State, wherever you are this evening, on visiting us, whether you're from the San Antonio area, whether you're uh, from Dallas, Fort Worth, Irving, uh, Keller, Arlington, anywhere up uh, in the Metroplex or really anywhere around Texas. We're just so happy to have you and uh, glad that you want to learn more about a great hearts education, a classical liberal arts, public charter schools, tuition free uh, for all Texas children. My name is Andrew Ellison. I'm the executive director for Great Hearts down here in San Antonio, a uh, longtime teacher, uh, school headmaster and principal, as well as a uh, proud Great Hearts parent. Uh, and I'm happy to, to be your host and MC uh, for this Info Night event this evening. Uh, and to kick things off, sit back, relax. We'd love for you to watch a little video clip before we start talking. I think just the feeling we got walking through the school, like there's no bells and whistles, there's no computer lab, but you can feel the energy and you can feel the joy in the kids in the classrooms. And my husband and I both looked at each other and we're like, oh my gosh, this is it. Like <laughs> we, we found our school. Our kids were actually attending a public school, elementary school, down the street. We were looking for a more challenging environment for our kids. We didn't know what we were getting into. But literally within the first semester, we were all in. As a public school educator for so many years, I was a never charter person. And I realized now in hindsight that I had been fed a lot of propaganda about charter schools. And when I started actually researching it, I learned, oh, it's really what is best for the education of each child. At Great Hearts, we love to form the hearts and minds of students through the pursuit of the true, the good, and the beautiful. Our students are going to read great books from Frog and Toad in first grade to the Brothers Karamazov in their senior year. We took a look at that book list and we were sold. One thing that we had found in our public school experience is that we were constantly monitoring what our children were being assigned to read and we really loved the book list at Great Hearts because we knew we were confident that they were being presented with material that was incredibly rich and would really uh, trigger their imaginations and their love of learning. The distinction of Great Hearts, as we saw it at that point, was that it would have the diversity that private schools didn't have, but then also an excellence in curriculum that typically one would not find in a public school. Our aim is to raise up virtuous young men and women who have a sense of purpose and vision, who are endowed with a sense of destiny that's been shaped by the great conversation, and who are equipped to live it out. Great Hearts does an incredible job of uniting and marrying the intellectual formation with moral formation. One of the great things about Great Hearts is that it appeals, instead of what is most base in our, our human nature, it appeals to what is the highest. For me, education isn't just about what you're learning in class that academic-wise, it's a building and forming of character. They're going to study and pursue those ennobling and lasting things with teachers who are intellectually, morally, and aesthetically alive. The teachers at Great Hearts set an exemplary example. They go above and beyond in also demonstrating these virtues in their own lives. There is so much to love about Great Hearts, but it all starts in the classroom. What I love about teaching is being in the classroom with my students. This is a classical education. And for generations, it's only been available at elite private schools. But we seek to make it available to all families, at least to all families who are willing to go on the journey with us. One thing that we were pleasantly surprised with, actually, when we got to Great Hearts, is that not only is the curriculum itself unifying in that it all coheres, but it also is unifying in that it brings diverse 
students from different socioeconomic backgrounds, different cultures, and it unifies them through the pursuit of truth and through the reading of excellent material. All the riches of the liberal arts, those which set their soul free, these are their rightful inheritance, their intellectual inheritance, and we endeavor to give them their initial possession of it. I was initially drawn to STEM type, type schools because I thought I love science and technology and engineering and math. What I found out is that most of those schools really aren't STEM. What they are is giving kids a screen, which doesn't, I don't think the science shows help them learn very well. But what Great Hearts is, is they emphasize science and engineering and math. They give them all those things that actually will make them technology workers. So I think Great Hearts, even though it doesn't advertise itself as STEM, is truly one of the deepest STEM schools that you could go to. We're going to an elite private school without the $30,000 price tag. As a professor in a, a, a liberal arts college, I had met a few of the graduates from the Arizona schools that came and they were impressive. Great Hearts was the best decision we could make for our students' education. As we continue to grow, we invite you to join us for the journey. Well, there's not so much I could say after that video that could really add to, uh, I think, some of the memorable things uh, that, that are communicated there. But I'll, I'll, I'll repeat and reiterate and we'll move on and engage in some more conversation. Great Hearts, Texas is a network of public tuition free charter schools uh, open to students, open to families with students in grades kindergarten all the way up through 12th grade through seniors in high school. Uh, we opened our first schools here in Texas back in the year 2014, graduated our very first senior class in 2018, and right now we're serving 10,000 students both in the Alamo City and up in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area. Our schools were founded by parents and educators who were passionate about good teaching and learning, rich curriculum, and moral formation for young people. Our schools are dedicated to, you heard that word a number of times during that video, virtue, intellectual and moral virtue, the cultivation of the powers of the human mind, imagination, intellect, uh, rational powers, as well as the affections of the human heart. The disposition towards friendship, towards wonder, humility, service, good citizenship. An education that neglects the heart and only cultivates the mind is something that, as President Teddy Roosevelt once said, produces someone who is a menace to society. We don't believe in that kind of education. It aims at full intellectual and moral formation training students not just for the workforce, but for citizenship, for lives of virtue, and human flourishing uh, as, uh, as Americans in the 21st century. We're gonna talk a little bit more with uh, a Great Hearts teacher in just a moment, also with the Great Hearts parent. Uh, we'll hear some more about curriculum, uh, the classroom, the Great Hearts learning experience. We'll hear some more about why families like yours choose Great Hearts for their children's K through 12 education. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit at the end about how to apply and how to enroll. Uh, but before we do that, um, I want to read a wonderful sentence uh, or series of sentences and clauses that were just brought to my attention today, which I think express beautifully well the educational ideal that Great Hearts is dedicated to. And this is a passage from a letter by one of our founding fathers of the American Republic, the great John Adams, a letter to his wife, Abigail, one of the founding mothers uh, of, of our uh, great American Republic. Uh, and it's, it's from a letter that uh, John Adams wrote to his wife while overseas serving his country as a diplomat. Uh, and it's about the education of their children. 
and, and stick with me for a while here. It's, it's a longer quotation, but I think it beautifully expresses what we aspire for at Great Hearts. John Adams writes to his wife, <clears throat> human nature with all its infirmities and deprivation is still capable of great things. It should be your care, therefore, and mine to elevate the minds of our children and exalt their courage, to accelerate and animate their industry and activity, to excite in them a habitual contempt of meanness, abhorrence of injustice and inhumanity, and an ambition to excel in every capacity, faculty, and virtue. Their bodies must be hardened as well as their souls exalted. Without strength and activity and vigor of the body, the brightest mental excellencies will be eclipsed and obscured. Wise words, wise words from one of the founders and shapers of our American Republic, John Adams. Uh, and I think it expresses a classical ideal of what education is all about both moral formation and intellectual formation, an ideal of education that is thousands of years old and which guides us at Great Hearts here now in the 21st century. Well, I'd love to welcome uh, onto the screen now to join me uh, a, a, an experienced Great Hearts teacher. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask uh, to come up on the screen now, Mrs. Chanel Mayorga. Uh, Ms. Mayorga uh, has taught uh, in the Great Hearts classroom at multiple schools, both in Texas uh, as well as in Arizona, the Copper State. Uh, she uh, also is now serving as Dean of Teachers at our newest school here in San Antonio, uh, Great Hearts Invictus. Ms. Mayorga, thank you so much for joining us this evening. How are you? Is Chanel muted? I think I might have misheard. Oh, oh, there we go. Hi, I'm good. I'm so happy, so to, happy be here. to be here. So glad that you were able to make it here. So um, how long, Chanel, have you been uh, in the profession, in the field of education? How long have you been a teacher or school administrator? My first year teaching with Great Hearts was in 2011. Okay. So almost yeah. 12 years. So what, what brought you, what attracted you as an educator, as someone following her vocation? Uh, what brought you to Great Hearts in the first place? Well, I'll be really honest. Uh, I wanted to teach, and it was really my first opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but I stayed because I fell in love. So, Well, I unpack that for us a little I bit. I love Great Hearts. What did you fall in love with, uh, uh, you know, in your classroom, maybe? What, what were your favorite subjects to teach from the Great Hearts program? What grade level actually did you start teaching at? I taught second grade for many okay. years. Okay. All right. Uh, so what did you love teaching the most? Subjects. Yeah, you got to pick something. Mm -hmm. Well, I love Spalding. Uh, okay. There's such beauty in just the order of Spalding. Tell us what uh, Spalding is. Spalding Phonics. This is a system for writing and spelling. Just tell tell the families about that a little bit. Yeah. So Spalding is our spelling curriculum. Um, the students learn a set of seventy phonograms, which okay. are smaller pieces of our language that right. make a particular sound or group of sounds. Yep. Traditional um, phonics. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they learn. Uh, both by speaking the sounds and they also use their fingers to sound oh, yeah. out words. Yep. Um, yep. and there's, it's just, it's a beautiful orderly yeah. piece of our now, curriculum. Yeah. Oh, sure. You know, getting the kinesthetic, getting the students moving and chanting while they're learning to spell and write. And do they, do we teach cursive in second grade or does that come a little bit later? We do. Uh, second grade, usually January, February, right, we teach right. cursive, and then yeah, by pretty, the end of the year, it's cursive all the time. Pre, you know, some people might say, "My gosh, what do you need cursive for? You can just text or or just do voice to text." Why? Why teach cursive? What does that do for kids? Well, I think it teaches discipline, um, and that there's there's beauty in those things, right? Um, I mean, we we could let students have messy handwriting, uh, but that's not what we do uh, with our Spalding Phonics. We have a really particular way 
of forming each letter and we do the same thing with cursive and and there's there's beauty in in that so sure yeah i mean looking at my my grandma my late grandmother's old birthday cards to me she could write so much more beautifully uh than, than i could and i don't think it's you know don't think it was something natural. She was just trained differently. So yeah, it's a beautiful thing to teach American kids in the 21st century uh, to good cursive uh, manuscript, good cursive, cursive penmanship. Um, so uh, could you talk also a little bit about the uh, uh, your, your, just your experience of, say, teaching poetry in the second grade classroom and the role that poetry plays in a great arts education? Oh, I love teaching poetry. Um, so when I taught second grade, we actually memorized about a poem a week. And we would talk about, with any poem, we would talk about um, any rhyme patterns. Of course, we would go over vocabulary the students didn't know. We would talk about any historical context that might be important. Um, and then we would also memorize and then recite the poems um, one student at a time in front mm -hmm. of the class. Mm -hmm. um, and we really, we did it for the sake of learning the poetry. Of course, getting the extra vocabulary, uh, oftentimes vocab that you would not come across. For sure. Any other yeah. day, right. um, especially in a second grade text. Um, so we did it, you know, we did it from a teaching standpoint to focus on vocabulary and talking about rhyme schemes and all of that. But also there's just something wonderful about taking the time to, sit and enjoy a poem and really pick it apart and then memorize it and share it with your class. <clears throat> yeah. And it goes, you know, the, it, the, it's not just something unique to Mrs. Mayorga's classroom, right? At Gray Hearts K through 12 students are regularly reading and reciting poetry together. I actually just this afternoon uh, was at one of our uh, high schools here in San Antonio and they were uh, holding a Shakespeare monologue competition for juniors and seniors in the afternoon. So, you know, these are kids who, when they were in elementary school, were memorizing short, simple poems, and now they're doing, you know, 15-line Shakespearean speeches with emotion and expression and things like that. So it's 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 a beautiful thing. Um, talk a little bit about also uh, the mathematics program. And Great Hearts uh, K through K through five. It's called Singapore Math. Uh, what does that look like in the classroom? What makes the Great Hearts Singapore Math way unique or different? So I'll start by saying I wish that I had learned math the Singapore way, and I feel like as an adult I understand math better because of it. Um, so with Singapore, you actually start with something very concrete. Uh, in K through five, uh, we give kids manipulatives. We give the scholars something to hold on to, whether it's counters that look like teddy bears or fraction tiles in the older grades. Yeah. And we pose a question. Uh, we let them explore with those manipulatives with the parameter of a particular question. And they're able to kind of discover something. So for instance, we could give them fraction tiles, which are all color coded based on one third or one half or one fourth. And we could say, could you make two? Could you make a yellow and a blue? Like, could we add a yellow and a blue? And the students will eventually look at their pile of tiles and say, absolutely not. We can't add yellow and blue. But if I trade them all out and make them all pink, now I can add them together and and now they're learning how to the, now they're learning how to add fractions with different denominators and things like that exactly yeah. so we start there and then we move to doing something very similar but uh in a pictorial form so that we're getting a little bit away from the manipulatives and then eventually they do go into that uh as my my son came home today and was saying we use the standard algorithm now um. <laughs> That's numbers, just pure numbers. Yeah, but you know, exactly. I've actually heard people, uh, advanced students and and even uh, degree holders in advanced mathematics say, what mathematicians really do is play with numbers. And that's why I think that the, the Singapore math practice of putting physical shapes and objects in a, together in intelligent ways to understand how numbers behave when you play with them. Uh, is is a wonderful thing, and I'm I'm actually just like you. I wish I had had Singapore math when I was young, 
because I think I would have had a much better experience. And I wouldn't have started telling myself this, you know, uh, around third or fourth grade that, oh, I just stink at math. And so many kids think that because of the way math is taught in this country. And it doesn't have to be that way. Everybody has an inner mathematician and Singapore can, can really, really set it free. Um, so, you know, we don't have all that much time, Ms. Mayorga, and I'm just so glad that you're able to, to join us and talk a little bit about curriculum, about poetry, about math, about spelling. Certainly we could go on and on. There's a lot more, but I, I thought I might ask you one sort of final question. Um, if you were talking to a family, if let's say they were friends of yours that were on the fence considering enrolling their child in, in great hearts, uh, what would you say to them about that decision and what, what they should do? Well, I would always say to choose great hearts um, specifically. Well, I have two reasons. One, because I believe that your student would be getting the absolute best education, most well-rounded education. But also there's a culture and a community that at all of the campuses that I've been at, there's nothing else like it. There's nothing else like the warmth um, and really familial feel, both amongst my colleagues being a teacher on campus and then amongst the, the families and the community. Um, so yeah. I think we all know from experience, especially those in the classroom, that when teachers are happy, students learn a lot. And that just, you know, those kind of conditions, when the teacher's souls are elevated and their hearts are energized uh, by good communities of colleagues dedicated to the same purpose, it's good for kids. So thank you so much for joining us, Mrs. Mayorga. I really appreciate you uh, taking thank a little you. time with us. Thanks so much. Well, Ms. Mayorga uh, alluded to the fact that uh, you know, her, her own son uh, is also a Great Hearts uh, student. I mentioned earlier, I'm a proud Great Hearts parent too. And I'd love to invite up onto the screen now uh, another Great Hearts parent uh, to engage in uh, a little conversation with us. Uh, Ms. Kamisha McCollum uh, is a parent at Great Hearts Live Oak up on the uh, northeast side of the Alamo City. She also is an employee. She works at uh, Great Hearts Live Oak as a director of uh, community engagement uh, for the school. And Ms. McCollum, thank you so much for joining us this evening. How are you? Great, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So so glad to have you. Um, So what attracted you, what made you as a parent interested in Great Hearts in the first place? four years ago now, three and a half years ago. Yeah. So um, actually my neighbor introduced me to Great Hearts. And so I had a conversation with her and and so I decided to do my own little research. And then what I noticed and what, what intrigued me was the ethnic diversity and the curriculum diversity. So not only is uh, my son who goes to Great Hearts, of course, as you stated, not only is he getting general education classes like science and math and Spalding. He's, but he's also getting music and art and foreign languages, and it starts at a very early age. And I wanted him to have a a, a well rounded well rounded balance, um, and so that was important to me. And I come from a public school, so this classical education was new to me. But I'm telling you, I am so glad that I chose to put him in this type of um, school and to give him an opportunity to get this type of education. Great. What grade is he in now? He is in the second grade. And we started here in kinder as the inaugural class. So we have been at Great Heart since it started. Founding family. Yes. Uh, you know, second grade is it's awfully young. Uh, mm -hmm. At that age, you know, a lot of times kids just like everything. But does he have a favorite <laughs> subject in school oh, yet? Well, OK, so he does. But um, he, he likes everything. But math and science and history are mm -hmm. his top three uh, favorite classes that he loves. He loves science, he loves math, and he loves history. Mm, that's great. Yeah. You know, I, I love how, for example, in second grade history at Great Hearts, the kids do a whole unit on ancient Greece, right? And get, get their heads filled, not just with, uh, you know, pictures of the Parthenon and marble sculptures, but with great stories of heroic mm -hmm. deeds and, uh, you know, tales of Odysseus and Zeus and uh, Athena and Apollo, as well as great, you know, episodes from from Greek history. That's and, fun. And I'm hearing all about it because we're, as yeah. a matter of fact, we're just completing 
Uh, he's just completing that portion of it, and they're getting ready to have a celebration here on tomorrow to celebrate them ending their study on on Greece. So yes, yeah. So I, I, you, you kind of uh, set me up for a question I wanted to ask you as a parent. How do you see the fruits of a great hearts education coming home? Yes. How have they transformed uh, oh what y'all talk about at the yes. dinner table or in the car or things like yes. that? So the important thing to me is I see him learning. So, you know, you send your you, you send your your students or your children to school. You expect that they're learning. You know that. But I actually see him learning. It's relevant in his daily activities. He's singing. He's coming home. We're getting ready to have a concert here soon. He's singing songs. He's loving math. He's talking to me in detail. So like when he's explaining things to me about what he did today, it's in, in specific details or he's making sure that I understand when I'm wrong about something because he understands it and he knows better because, uh, you know, that's what his teacher said. So I see discipline in his homework. Um, I see in his level of study, in his level of responsibility, even at this young age. Uh, I see that uh, the teachers are teaching them to be individuals uh, and to be responsible for themselves and for their work and for their work ethics. And it started in the kindergarten. So those are the things that are important to me. And I see that in him at home. Uh, and so it transfers from school to home, which is important uh, to me and for him to, to develop that and to see him doing it at such a young age. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Um, so one last question uh, I'd love to love to ask you here. In your role as director mm -hmm. of community engagement uh, for Live Oak, you talk with a lot of families. Uh, you. you talk with families who are enrolled in the school. Yes. You talk to folks who are interested in coming and, and visiting. What um, uh, what would you say to a family who was wondering whether or not they yeah. should come along and be a part of the Great Hearts journey? That is a great question, and um, and I do get it sometimes. So. Um, I look at it this way. I said, there's no perfect school, but there are perfect schools for children. And if you're looking for structure, if you're looking for discipline, if you're looking to create good citizens, if you're looking for an awesome, well diverse education, if you're looking for a rigorous, but well thought out curriculum that would challenge your child to think, to question, to grow, then this is the right school for you. And the biggest thing I say, if you have not visited the school, Schedule a tour to see the school in action, to get a vibe of the different campus cultures and see it for yourself and don't base your decision on other people's opinions. Because as I stated, it may not be a perfect school for one, but it could be a perfect school for another. And what you will find is that in the end goal of any great hearts, uh, at least in my opinion, is finding, and I know we say this all the time, but it's true, the truth, the beauty and the goodness in everyone. And that's who we are and that's what we do. So um, if you're on the fence, those are the things, if you're looking for that type of education, visit a school, look, figure it out for yourself, engage in the vibe of that culture, and I promise you, you won't be disappointed. That's great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Really appreciate you coming in and, and giving us a little bit of time away from your family this evening. Thank, well, thank you so you. much, Ms. McCollum. Thank you. All right. So, uh, you know, there's so much more to a Great Hearts education, and we could talk about uh, the study of American history. We could talk about the, the great literature uh, that our students read uh, from kindergarten all through 12th grade. Talk about the study of Latin, right? That's such a, such a rare thing and an, a fun thing, I think, a unique thing about great hearts that all of our students are, are going to study that ancient Roman language uh, that uh, even though we can maybe joke and say it's dead, well, e pluribus unum. Uh, it's on our money in America. Latin is still alive in the in the legal profession um, and in a lot of the vocabulary of American politics, uh, even in the in the 21st century. We could talk about the arts and drama. And you heard uh, Ms. McCollum talk just a little bit about music. Every child at Great Hearts take music for years. Every student learns to sing. Every middle schooler and high schooler will sing in a choir. Uh, every student will take visual arts and will work on drawing and painting and sketching. We'll do a senior art project that puts all those skills together. Every Great Hearts High School student will act in a play. Uh, one of our campuses is working on a Shakespeare's Henry V right now, as well as a stage adaptation of maybe the greatest American film all time, 
uh, Casablanca that's going to be playing at one of our high schools uh, just in the next couple of weeks here uh, in Greyheart, San Antonio. So rigorous math and science, foreign language, fine arts, great literature, history, and philosophy for every student. That is the Great Hearts mission. And that's what our K through 12 public charter schools are here to provide to Texans, to Texan families, Texan students. So before we wrap up, I'd uh, love to bring up on the screen uh, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, April Hufty, to talk a little bit about action steps. If you want to apply, enroll, or find out more, uh, April. Thank you, Mr. Ellison. Um, yes, we are right in the middle of open enrollment for next year, the 23-24 school year. You may think it is very early, um, but it, it is always uh, at this time every year um, for the next fall. We invite you to apply. Um, what does open enrollment mean? Um, open enrollment is the, the period of time that we collect um, enrollment applications from new families for our lottery. So anyone applying during open enrollment, which is November 7th through December 9th, is eligible. So whether you're the first person to apply on November 7th or the last person to apply on um, December 9th, um, all those applications are collected and randomly assigned a lottery number. So uh, what happens after December 9th is what we call post open enrollment. And those applications are time stamped and ordered um, by the uh, by that time stamp. So you might want to know when is the lottery? Our lottery is January 18th. Um, and um, after which we will, once we run that lottery on January 18th, every campus has a separate lottery, every grade level has a separate lottery. Um, those campuses will then immediately send enrollment offers for the fall um, and try to fill the bulk of their enrollment in January and February. Um, so you might say, what, what, what happens if I don't get an offer in January or February? Um, every campus will send rolling offers as seats become available um, until the first day of school and beyond. Um, so uh, the key is really to apply during this open enrollment time. Um, you have eight days left because it ends um, December 9th, um, and that is your best chance to, to, to be a part of our schools and, and get in um, one, of our, one of our schools. So um, how do I apply? Go to any of our websites and click the apply button, um, or you can simply go to greathearts.schoolmint.net. So hopefully we'll, we'll um, put that up for you if it's not up. And, um, and the application takes five minutes to apply and you can apply um, for multiple campuses with one application. Um, any, any school that you are willing to drive to, um, you can apply to those campuses and see where you land. You'll know, um, you'll either get an offer in January or you will know where you fall on the wait list. Um, so go ahead and apply. Even if you're not completely sure, you haven't completely done all your um, research, you haven't taken a tour yet, we encourage you to apply anyway um, and uh, so, th uh, so that you have that lottery number. Um, for questions about um, our enrollment policy, yes, we have employee priority, sibling priority, transfer priority. For those questions, feel free to contact me. The contact information is there. Give me a call or email me at that email address, enrollment at greatheartstx.org, and I'm happy to help you help walk you through the um, policy or our application or anything. I'm happy to help in any way. So back to you, Mr. Ellison. Great, thank you so much, April. Uh, and thanks to all families for, for dropping in tonight, for watching just a snippet. And we wanna thank you again for your interest uh, in Great Hearts. And I, I wanna echo what Kamisha McCollum said just a few minutes ago. If you wanna know more, if you're on the fence, submit the application, but come and see. Come and visit one of our schools. Uh, if you'd like to arrange a tour of a, a campus near you, if you have more questions that you'd like to ask about the program, uh, about what we aim at here at Great Hearts in, in every aspect of, of the school's life, please go ahead and just email us to that email address, enrollment at greatheartstx.org. 
We'd love to hear from you uh, and love to see you on one of our campuses sometime soon. So thank you very much, families. Have a great Thursday night and uh, happy December to everyone.